okay, Brother Macius, uh, you may continue. Just um, kind of veg back on, on on one of the things that you said about the goal of policing is order. Um, and, uh, as far as with, with Cop City, I definitely think it's an opportunity to uh, create propaganda on our mission by addressing it. Uh, because with, with the, the uh, police's job or their supposed uh, intention is to be able to create order, uh, I feel like that's the same thing that we have to uh, basically have to have as a UNIA uh, when it comes to um, race, pride, and self-reliance, which is the order, which, which is what's going to help create order for our people. Um, and especially with um, that $80 million going to that project, what projects can we put together that's going to help e evoke uh, self-reliance, self-pride, uh, not, you know, within the entire city, you know, we, we can approach it where, you know, the city is, is, is coming together to, to um, Im implement or fund some programs that we have that's gonna help everybody within the city. And we could be the ones that kind of pushing the message for that uh, uh, alternative. So um, instead of uh, more policing, more enforcement, uh, pretty much helping people uh, own their forces, own their self and have that self-reliance, self-confidence to be the force that creates change in their own lives versus having a the outside entity that's that's being that's keeping them disciplined and teaching them the tools to do it themselves. So I think that's the propaganda approach that I would take it uh with position us to take ownership of that uh and the programs that we have to be able to put that in place. I, I definitely agree with that um an opportunity to uh, share propaganda, um, you know, promote uh, self-reliance, self-governance. <clears throat> um, and, you know, if if we don't want, you know, outside or the government doing these things and funding these things, then we need to come together as a community uh, and provide our own solution. So um, we as the UNIA should be spearheading that, um, especially for uh, our people in, in this jurisdiction. Okay. So we'll make sure we talk about Cop City in depth. Uh, we can make that, I guess we can talk about that next next meeting if we don't have any other uh, suggestions, but uh, everybody can do some research on it over the next couple of weeks and um, we'll go through it in depth and uh, give an official stance or position for uh, Division 421. Um, all right, hope there's no questions. Any brief questions on... Cop City before we uh, move to the topic for tonight. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, let me copy the pledge. Sister Tania, greetings. <clears throat> uh, oh, Sister Tania dropped off. Okay. Well, she said she was going to be busy tonight. So um, I'll, <clears throat> I'm going to have to do a little bit of lifting. I'm on, well, I just need everybody's support to get through this. So uh, the recording's already started. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Tonight is April 23rd, 2023. Uh, I am Brother John, President, UNIA ACL Division 421. Let me turn my camera on. Uh, welcoming you to our mass meeting for uh, April 23rd, 2023. Um, as we open our meetings in the UNIA and in Division 421, we always want to have a pledge to the UNIA flag. This is not just the RBG flag. This is the UNIA flag. So I have to keep correcting that. If you would, uh, please find a black flag or, or red, black, and green flag or put one in your mind and and uh, say the pledge with me, uh, not call and repeat, but say it with me. And uh, I commit my body, my body, body spirit, spirit, spirit to the protection, to the protection of defense, defense and security <laughs> of the red, 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 black, red, and green. I dedicate, I dedicate my, my life, life, I dedicate my life, to the of my Africa. Africa. Mother Africa, and the liberation, liberation, liberation of, of, of black children. children. 
I accept for myself, for myself and my descendants, the descendants, the teachings of universal African nationalism, the teachings of universal African nationalism, in terms of the truth. And I promise that our children will that be instilled. I promise that our children will be instilled with the purpose and knowledge of themselves. As well. The purpose and knowledge of themselves and African people. In order that the cause of our struggle, the of our struggle, or, the of our struggle, struggle will neither no falter nor fail. fail. Will neither falter nor fail until all black, all black people, people are free and united. united. All black people are free and united. united through one God, one God, one aim, one aim, one, aim, one, one destiny. One, one destiny. Race first. Race first. Race first. Race first. Race first. Thank you, everybody. Brother Mason, I heard you trying to keep up. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, we want to get to the point where uh, we got to get past call and response. Uh, we've been doing this, should be 11 years at this point. Um, so we, we got to be able to say this together in unison as it was uh, intended. A uh, brief agenda for today. Uh, it was expecting some new members to be on. We may have some new members. So I want to go over the preamble briefly. Uh, everyone should have gotten a text uh, on Friday, uh, which was April 21st. <clears throat> I would like to officially uh, have, you know, call that 421 day. Um, so in the, in the past, we've called members kind of on their birthdays to wish them happy birthday. Uh, and that's also an opportunity to uh, get members dues updated. Um but this is, it was a tedious process day to day. And it is something that we still want to do <clears throat> to maintain that relationship and that level of respect with our members, but uh, it is labor intensive. So uh, this year, uh, I would like to just make it every year 421 uh, would be our request for fundraisers, allow you know members to get their dues paid up, uh, pay ahead, make donations, uh, anything like that. So uh, everybody should have gotten a text on Friday asking for our support. Uh, next thing we will talk about is training. So now that HEC is, is finished, um, we really have to step up. <clears throat> um, I have to step up uh, personally as um, roles of commissioner um, and, and start to, you know, help build and support other divisions in our uh, district. So South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Uh, we have not really had any strong divisions uh, in the past five years uh, in, our in our district outside of uh, 421. So, um, you know, I want to spend some time uh, as commissioner and try to see what we can do um, to help uh, build some more divisions in, in the South and in our district. HEC recap, um, I'll go through some pictures that we had that we were able to produce. This is a private meeting, so there weren't a lot of pictures, but the pictures still tell the story. <clears throat> and um, there was also a letter put together by the first assistant president general out of Chicago, Brother Shaka Barak, uh, executive officers should have gotten a copy of that, but I'll share that with our membership as well. Um, and I'm going to, I'm not going to really touch on executive body. <clears throat> um, for our executive officers, I appreciate everybody being on. Uh, we really need to have our executive meeting. We'll have it on the first Saturday of May. That's 2022. I don't know what day that is, but First Saturday of May, <clears throat> uh, very important meeting. We're going through the, the details of our roles and responsibilities uh, for each executive office and the expectations of each executive office. And just a heads up, one of the big expectations that we will have um, is reports. Basically, each officer should be providing at least a monthly report as to um, you know their plans or or programs or events or um, anything that um, they would like to see happen, any support that they need for that month, <clears throat> uh, and these are things that we should be sharing uh, with our membership. Uh, we shouldn't just be reactive to what everybody else is doing, but we should be proactive in creating uh, events and programs for others to uh, respond to. So. 
me see. Um, preamble, give me a second. Let me um, get our preamble. Uh, President John, um, if I may, uh, the first Saturday is the third. May 3rd. May 3rd, thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah, May 3rd. Um, yeah, we were supposed to have a meeting yesterday. Um, I'm a little disappointed in my executive officers. We'll, we'll get to that. But it's just me personally and my personal expectations. Um, I wanted us, and, and we still can do it. So, you know, uh, just take this, you know, with a grain of salt or whatever. Um, want to maintain the momentum that we created at HEC. <clears throat> so I don't want us to take too much time uh, away from each other and away from our responsibilities. Um, I want us to, you know, hit the ground running uh, and set the example. We are effectively, we are the UNIA in the South <clears throat> and we have to, you know, um, own up to that. Correction, Brother John, I'm sorry. It's May 6th, I'm sorry. May 6th, oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. All right. Um, let's see. Let me share the preamble and then we'll continue. What's the next one? Hmm. Okay. So for the new members, and for the current members and the, and the veteran members, because uh, we as all, especially the officers, we're supposed to have this memorized per uh, President Ross Marvin, as well as myself. Um, but I can't hold us responsible because I haven't memorized it. But we should all memorize this preamble. Uh, and it states, this is the preamble of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. The Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League is a social, friendly, humanitarian, charitable, educational, institutional, constructive and expansive society and is founded by persons desiring to the utmost to work for the general uplift of the Negro peoples of the world. And the members pledge themselves to do all in their power to conserve the rights of their noble race and to respect the rights of all mankind, believing always in the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. The motto of the organization is one God, one aim, one destiny. Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind, realizing that if the strong oppresses the weak, confusion and discontent will ever mark the path of man. But with love, faith, and charity towards all, the reign of peace and plenty will be heralded into the world, and the generations of men shall be called blessed. Um, so that is our preamble uh, from 1919, I believe it was originally created. <clears throat> let me stop sharing. So that is that. Continuing on the agenda, uh, as I said, 421 day, if you hadn't gotten the message, this is a reminder. Um, it's just an opportunity to uh, get caught up on dues if you're not, or make a uh, contribution to the organization. Um, but officially, you know, this will be our first annual 421 day. Uh, and we got to, you know, find ways to celebrate this uh, and make it bigger as the years go on. But it, it just makes sense. Um, we are Division 421. So April 21st, I've always felt should be uh, some type of special day for us in some way. And, and what better um, um, level of promotion than, you know, a fundraiser. So um, everybody should have got a message for Celebrate 421 Day by donating to your local UNIA Division 421 in Atlanta, along the Marcus Garvey race first, uh, and provided the links for um, uh, digital payments, PayPal, and uh, Cash App. So just keep those on standby if you ever um, need those. <clears throat> in regards to training, um, the thing that, that we have to ask, you know, when, when people, uh, one of the things that we need is a level of understanding um, and a level of cohesion. Not necessarily that we all think the same, but at least we have a level of understanding to where we don't have to take an hour and a half to explain um, a general principle of the organization. So uh, the, the, the common phrase would be, you know, are we on the same page? Um, 
And another thing we have to ask is, are we in the same book? If we are on the same page, we're both on page five, but we're in different books. Uh, we're not, you know, cohesive. Um, and we have to understand what are our aims and objectives and how to achieve <clears throat> those aims and objectives. And the way our uh, focus for that is message to the people, uh, course of African philosophy. Uh, so um, this is my expectation of, of my officers, of our officers. Um, if we're going to, you know, if we have any page to be on the same page, it should be message to the people, course of African philosophy or uh, the UNIA ACL constitution. Those are the two main uh, governing <clears throat> texts, uh, in my opinion, and, that, and that's how we will manage and govern uh, Division 421. One of the things that Garvey says in this text and in this course, <clears throat> uh, in the beginning, it says, in, the keeping, in keeping with the constitutional provisions in the aims and objects of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, to establish schools and colleges for the racial education of our race, the founder, the first president general of the UNIA, Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey made several attempts to educate some and re-educate others who would be charged with the responsibility of leadership in the UNIA. He sincerely felt that no one should be held responsible for his actions unless he or she is educated or trained to perform those responsibilities. And since the UNIA had become the largest responsible movement in racial history, its leadership should be thoroughly informed so that the proper information would be dispensed. Marcus Garvey was a man of vision, therefore his students had to be visionaries. <clears throat> so um, uh, just a general responsibility and a general expectation. Um, you know, if we want to, you know, one of the general themes behind Garveyism is doing for self. You know, uh, the famous quote, where's the black man's kings and queens, uh, where's uh, armies and navies, men of high affairs. Garvey declared that he, he could not find them. He, he declared that he would uh, help to make them. Um, that is a general principle of a Garveyite and especially a Garveyite uh, quote unquote leader. You know, we have the, um, in a visionary aspect, we have to be able to look at the landscape and see what is needed for our people and not only see what is needed, but take on the responsibility to develop ourselves to provide um, that which is needed. <clears throat> so, uh, and also uh, in, this is kind of in, in conjunction with the previous slide of support and fundraisers. Um, but Garvey says, <clears throat> Uh, this is on page 192 of Message to the People. He says the amount of money collected, and this is talking about the five-year plan of the UNIA, um, but it applies to general fundraising and general um, economics for uh, a government or a nation or uh, an organization like the UNIA. The amount of money collected in the, let me see, in the, in the, oh, the amount of money connect, collected in the plan uh, will be appropriated for carrying out the many schemes authorized by the Convention of 1934 as set in the curricular referred to above. In explaining the five-year plan, great stress must be laid on the fact that for the Negro to realize the objective of a nation and government of his own, he must first have financial security. While no individual can create a nation or government for the race because each individual is looking after his own personal and private business, there must be an organized cooperative effort, uh, an organized cooperative effort towards this end. Hence, uh, the effort is represented by the UNIA to which all Negroes must contribute and with which they must cooperate. Um, the next line is, is very important. Garvey says, established nations and governments get their revenue from taxes levied on the citizens. The Negro, having no government, cannot raise revenue for such a purpose in that way. Hence, those who desire such a thing must be voluntary contributors. Um, so <clears throat> what Garvey is saying is since we don't have the ability to uh, enforce our taxes, 
Um, you know, the government has the IRS, you know, they can garnish your wages, uh, incarcerate you, things like that for not paying taxes. We as the UNIA in the state that we're in right now, we don't have the ability to enforce <clears throat> um, you know, uh, consequences for those that don't um, provide or pay taxes. So uh, for us to achieve that goal, for us that realize the, the benefit and um, self-governance, um, we have to be voluntary contributors. Garvey continues on the next page. He says to establish to oh no, the establishment of the different enterprises, which will help to find employment for Negroes and the profit of which will go to help organization to help the organization to carry out its nationalistic pro program is in keeping with the principles of the organization to hold all its properties and wealth in hereditary trust for the Negro race. A, contribute, a contribution to the fund simply means that one is helping to place the race through organization in a position of financial security uh, through which it can march on to the realization of nationhood and government. Uh, and I'll stop there. <clears throat> but um, in essence, our contributions must be voluntary. And I know I'm preaching to the choir to an, to an extent. Uh, everyone on this call uh, is a act, well, not everyone, but most everyone on this call is active dues paying member um, and, and, an, and an active supporter. We just, uh, we have a lot of leaders on. <clears throat> so our leaders, we need to understand how Garvey taught us to communicate the need for financial security and um, to ask for support. So, <clears throat> all right, with that, that takes care of fundraisers or, or the, the 421 uh, fundraiser, the first fundraiser for, for 421 or um, 421 day. Uh, Want to do a brief recap of 2023 High Executive Council. <clears throat> um, as I said, this was a private event. There are not a lot of photos, uh, but we did have some photos and I'll go through our Facebook. Uh, I think that's our best repository of um, photos that share, you know, uh, some of the events and some of the people that we had in town. Um, I got to give thanks to those that um, attended, uh, those that supported uh, the executive officers. Uh, Lady President Mama Amina <clears throat> did a great job helping uh, set up and prepare, and especially with the food. First Vice President Brother Omasius uh, came in town um, and, you know, as soon as he got here, uh, went to work um, in, in supporting us and making sure we were doing a great job hosting. So definitely appreciate uh, that level of sacrifice, Brother Macy's. Second Vice President, uh, Brother Ken Wardo, uh, was there pretty much the whole time, um, did some vending, uh, but helped to make sure that you know, we, we did a good job of hosting our uh, guest divisions. Third Vice President, Brother Cornelius, <clears throat> came in on the last day. He was busy working, but uh, on that last day, he he, uh, he did a great job. He helped us clean up and um, put the space, uh, the Omen Allegrio, uh, back in order. <clears throat> so I definitely appreciate that, Brother Cornelius. Former First Lady Vice President, Sister Ra Ebony was there as well uh, for, for the most part um, and also did a great job um, helping us host. Um, I know she helped with the food as well as uh, some other aspects. Um, so appreciate her support. Colonel James, our uh, head of Un Universal African Legions, uh, Bob James, um, <laughs> I don't know what else, what I can say about um, what Baba James has, you know, been doing for us behind the scenes uh, in regards to the relationship with Owen Allegrio. Uh, he's there every day, um, opening the doors, you know, uh, at 8 a.m. or soon thereafter uh, and staying, you know, until everyone leaves. So um, definitely, definitely appreciate um, Colonel James for uh, uh, helping us maintain the space, host the space, as well as uh, promote uh, high executive council, um, bringing in new members, um, getting vendors. So <clears throat> just just <clears throat> can't say enough about what uh, uh, Colonel James has been uh, doing for Division 421, especially this year. Attorney Hemotep uh, was there for the most part. Uh, our legal defense counsel and our legal representative, I leaned on him heavily um, while we were running around, <clears throat> you know, trying to make sure everybody's comfortable. Um, wanted to make sure Attorney Emotep uh, was able to just focus on what was being said, what was being done, um, what was being proposed, 
uh, so that we would have a good um, assessment of, of uh, how we can respond and, and how we should respond. So uh, thank you, Attorney Emotep. And also, yeah, got some good news for uh, Attorney Emotep, but that'll come at the uh, report that Shock, Brother Shaka Barak um, put together. Sister Erica did an excellent job um, helping us with the food as well. Lunch on Thursday, no, lunch on Friday, as well as dinner on Friday. Um, uh, great job just, you know, holding it down. She, I think she was the only, well, one of the main ones plating up uh, the food for everybody. We had a hosting type ceremony. So uh, we did a four course meal. Um, we started with uh, navy bean soup and cream of wheat cornbread, followed that up with a salad. And this was all served uh, to our guests, followed that with a salad, uh, had entrees of <clears throat> jerk chicken, um, barbecue chicken or salmon. Um, the sides were greens, uh, yams. Um, shout out to Sister Kay in Philadelphia. Uh, she put the macaroni and cheese together. Uh, what else did we have? Uh, and then for dessert, we had either uh, cheesecake um, or tres leches. But uh, it was a four course meal served by Division 421. So just appreciate everybody, <clears throat> you know, and like I said, Sister Erica was um, helping with that with a big part. Brother James uh, came uh, towards the end, but um, definitely, <clears throat> you know, held to his word, supported the event um, and um, did did a good job as far as uh, with, with, what, uh, with what was available, um, promoting and sharing um, the event. And Sister Aziz, the wife of Attorney Emotep, if there's anybody that I missed, uh, please forgive me. <clears throat> but uh, with that, let me go through our Facebook. And then um, it was it was anything that anybody would like to say in regards to... Um, in regards to... Well, let me let me finish let me finish the pictures and stuff, and then uh, I'll open it up for comments. So, uh, <clears throat> shameless promotion, um, UNIA four twenty one Facebook. Make sure you uh, go hit the like button, uh, go through all of our posts, and uh, like all of our posts, all our old stuff and everything. Uh, we appreciate that. So we started on April thirteenth. Uh, we had some the drummers from Atlanta. I, I, Brother Jakuma told me the name of the drummers. I can't think of it right now, but um, they they will be with us and they'll be supporting a lot of our events. But this is when we were setting up on the 13th, just a brief little video that I put together as I was walking around. I wasn't, you know, just, just letting people know we're getting started. <clears throat> um, then we got some better pictures here. So... This is uh, President General Michael Duncan. This is the uh, gentleman that sits in the seat of uh, Marcus Garvey. So the highest official uh, in the UNIA, um, the Honorable Michael R. Duncan. Uh, this is Brother Shaka Barak, first assistant uh, president out of, or first vice president out of uh, Chicago Division 429. Um, he did a great job hosting uh, the event. So for all three days, he was kind of just at the, he was moderating and, and hosting, did a great job. Uh, <laughs> this is me behind our secretary general. Uh, I don't really know what was going on here, but, um, you know, as hosts, uh, we got to make sure we uh, represent the flag and the flag is uh, being flown at the right times. Um, and we have to take on that responsibility uh, of doing that. So <clears throat> I can't, I don't really know what was going on here, but if I got the flag, then it was something serious. <laughs> Let me hit that like button. Uh, so this must, have, these must have come from Brother Everett. This is Brother Everett, uh, President Baltimore Division 106. Oh, my breaking. President Baltimore Division 106 and our Minister of Information. So he uh, helps with our promotion as well. Um, let me see, that's that. Uh, we got some different pictures here. Brothers from Chicago, um, President Marua for, uh, Pharrell, um, uh, Bal oh, not Baltimore, Chicago Division 401, 
Uh, this is his sergeant at arms, Brother Micah L. And I forgot Brother Anthony's position. He might be secretary or something. But uh, delegation out of Chicago. Um, and shout out to Chicago uh, 401. They were on post the entire time. So you see these brothers standing up. And um, that's something that we have to do better uh, locally, but we need brothers, you know, to help us with that. So um, shout out to Chicago for being on post and, and making sure that the space was secure. First Assistant and High Chancellor, uh, First Assistant President General and High Chancellor, Brother Raymond Duguay, um, he is responsible for our finances, um, our parent body account, our <clears throat> uh, African Redemption Fund account, uh, he gave a report uh, and was also available for uh, questions. Uh, so he was here um, as well. Uh, this is a panel discussion that we had on Friday. So uh, shout out to uh, our panel. Uh, we were supposed to have a few other brothers, but this is what we ended up with. And if we also missed our sister. We had Sister Nabantu out of Pan-African Federalist Movement who came and joined us. Uh, Brother Tutmo Sankara of the World African Diaspora Union, Brother Gerald X, and Brother Stanley Muhammad from Nation of Islam, Mosque 15B, and this is myself, uh, Brother John, President, Division 421. Uh, we had a discussion. The topic of it was the report from the diaspora, like we were supposed to um, just give our, you know, assessment of what, and we actually did give our assessment of what was going on in our, in our um, cities or jurisdictions show some of the commonalities uh, of the problems as well as uh, provided some solutions we could all uh, tap into. Um, and we were, I think we ended up on the focus of, well, I know we talked about women, um, the, the role of women and men, like genders. Oh, we spoke on men specifically, sorry. Uh, and, and how men have kind of deteriorated um, in their responsibilities and, and, and in our presence uh, in the communities. Um, the way I can, the way I would summarize it now at this point is we always say it takes a village to raise a child, you know, but uh, as men, we have to understand that that village has to be built, uh, it has to be maintained and it has to be protected. Um, you know, the, our sisters will do their their job of nurturing uh, developing, you know, our, our youth, but we have to provide that stable structure and protection uh, such that that can uh, go on. So it's just the roles of where we've fallen down uh, as men and Sister Nabantu uh, represented uh, the sisters, but she's not in the picture. And that was on Friday. Uh, no, wait, that was Thursday evening. So let me see. This is Brother James. Uh, this was Saturday. Brother James just got a quick picture with uh, President General and First Assistant President General. So these, it's like our president and vice president of the government. <clears throat> um, and then this was on Saturday. We went to the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. So uh, this is a penitentiary that where Garvey was incarcerated. Uh, 1925 to 27. <clears throat> um, it's actually, you know, still functioning. Uh, we went up to the steps. We were uh, quickly, you know, asked to, to, to leave and vacate the premises. But uh, before we did, you know, we got some pictures. And uh, of course, as we said, you know, we're not here to fight against the police or make any type of confrontation. Uh, we did what we had to do. We got what we needed um, that we moved on. So. Um, it's just it's just a good thing and it's an honor to have this this delegation be able to um, attend this. I don't want to call it a landmark, but it's a significant uh, location in the in the history of, of Garvey and the life of Garvey. So President General Michael R. Duncan, first assistant, President General Raymond Duguay. Uh, this looks like brother Justin Blake. Uh, you may know the name Blake. Um, I think his brother Jacob Blake was the brother in Kenosha, Washington, um, that was shot in the back by police. He's a rel he's a relative, I think, uncle or something of uh, brother Jacob. This is brother uh, Lynn, what is his name? Lamar, brother Lamar, out of <clears throat> Detroit. This is President Clyde, Division Four Twenty Nine. 
Um, this is our third assistant president general out of Baltimore Division 330, uh, Brother Charles. I'm going to say Brother Clyde again. Uh, as we said, Division 401 president, Brother Marua. <clears throat> this is our fourth assistant president general, um, Brother Kwahir Asar Khan. Lady President of Division 330, Sister Laureen Butler uh, in Washington, D.C. The first assist, first Lady Vice President of Division 407 and former Lady President of Division 407. Let me zoom in. Okay, that's all I got. Uh, sister Mukaraba here, our <clears throat> fair-skinned sister. Um, um, and then this is uh, first, lady, first Lady President, Division 429, Sister... But she's the wife of Brother Clyde. What is her name? Georgia, Sister Georgia. <clears throat> uh, this is first, no, this is the president of Division of 432 um, in Queens and Brooklyn, uh, Brother Oster. And behind him is first vice president or first, yeah, first vice president of Chicago, Division 429, Brother Shaka, the host. Uh, this is myself. I was coming down, or I don't know what I was doing. And then um, Brother Everett, Division 106, Baltimore. <clears throat> uh, Brother Macius was here with us. Um, I guess he was, I he might've been taking a picture. I don't know. Um, but uh, great delegation, a great event we were able to attend. And this is just a brief picture of Mama Mina. I think that's all I've got for that. So let me go back to... Uh, before I get to our report from Brother Shaka Barak, uh, and that'll close out um, basically pretty much most of what I got, I'm pretty sure. Uh, any questions or comments anybody would like to say about High Executive Council? Anybody that attended or just heard about it? Nobody. Well, President John, by my side, it was my first high executive council meeting, and I enjoyed every second of it. Um, I enjoyed networking. I enjoyed getting to know the other presidents, the uh, president general, and all you know the whole the whole high council um, chair board, the whole high council board um, meeting, and like I said, meeting, networking, and um, socializing with each and every one from from everywhere and knowing where they, where their stats are and where they are in, in their movements um, as far as each each individual division. So yeah. um, personally, <clears throat> for me, um, I, I enjoyed the experience and I enjoyed to uh, uh, get in contact with uh, our other divisions so we can keep up together in unison of the movement and how we're moving. Right. So Yes, excellent. Yes, thank you, Sister I Ebony. Thank you for that. That's exactly what you know. High Council was about is about um, uh, is you know working together and making sure we as a government are on the same page. Um, and the only way we can do that is by having these relationships. So, you know, as I said before, High Executive Council, um, this is our best opportunity to make those relationships. Uh, and, and I thank Sister Ra Ebony for, um, you know, actually executing on that opportunity uh, and capitalizing on that opportunity and being able to provide another perspective uh, as to, you know, the importance of these meetings uh, and, you know, the direction of, of the UNIA, uh, not only from my perspective, but you know, from from other members as well as uh, other divisions and and our and our leadership. Thank you, Sister Wright. Me. Um, uh, anybody else want to give any comment on High Executive Council? Say anything on High Executive Council before I go to the Shaka's report. This thing is broke. Okay. So um, High Executive Council, I don't, know, let's see. I don't remember exactly what days, I can't. 
Um, let me see. Drawing a blank on the days. So that's four days ago. Yeah, just because they say April 15th was, April 15th was, so this is 13th through the 15th. April 15th was Friday, I think. Yeah, wait, no, it was Saturday. Yeah, April 15th was Saturday. So uh, Brother Shaka sent this out on the 18th. Uh, I guess Tuesday, five days ago. So um, I would, I'm taking this and uh, submitting this as our official report uh, for High Executive Council 2023, unless there's something that has been provided by Division 421 that we would like uh, to supersede this. But I don't expect anyone to have a report other than um, Brother Emotep. He had the most time to kind of just focus on a report. But with that, let me just go through this. It says the UNIA and ACL 2023 High Executive Council Conference Summary Unofficial by Brother Shaka Barak, First Vice President of the Garvey and Kruma Memorial Progressive Division, number 429 uh, in Chicago, former Minister of Education and third, pres third Assistant President General. He says the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, UNIA, a High Executive Council HEC conference was held from April 12th to April 15th, 2023 in Atlanta, Georgia. The conference hosted by the Atlanta UNIA Division Number 421, whose president is John Hargrove, used the day of the 12th for his members to clean up and decorate the compound. The conference took place at the Omanala Grio Afrocentric Museum, 337 Dargan Place a museum that features some great artwork showing that African and African diaspora culture, showing the African and African diaspora cultural experiences. It was truly a compound large enough to house both indoor and outdoor activities equally. It was an honor to meet the owner of this establishment who attended one day and brought with him a Black Star Line stock certificate. At this compound, both male and females drummers welcomed attendees with the beating of their drums. The sisters from Philly and the youth babies took over the dance floor. Watching this and listening to the drums was how my first day at the conference started on Thursday, April 13th. I was appointed to serve as speaker in the HEC conference, which I expected and immediately opened the first session at, that began at 10 a.m. The four days were nothing but eventful, and the offices of the host division number 421, Mama Amina Thomas, Lady President, Brother Omasius Tentu, First Vice President, never had an idle moment, but were constantly serving their HEC guests, as was their president, Brother John Hargrove. Every meal they served was delicious. Rules governing the HEC were read, and a round robin was done asking members for their names and where they were from. After the welcome, the next few hours saw report after report from HEC officers to division officers. Divisions from Kenya and Curacao also called in their division reports. It was announced that Mama Yasmin, director of the Black Cross Nurses, is looking forward to working with a representative in every UNIA division. Uh, Mama Yasmin is out of New York Division 432. Uh, so it was announced that, you know, um, we basically need local representatives for Black Cross nurses, just like we have for uh, the African Legion. <clears throat> there should be a leader within the juris within our uh, jurisdiction or district that can communicate uh, to our national leadership uh, and make sure that uh, we're on the same page um, with the plans nationally. Um, every UNIA member and their division was required to register for which they received a folder, notebook, and pen. Sister Alicia Nunez, Secretary of Division 429, assisted the Secretary General Brenda Amorkan. Brothers May L, Anthony Jackson, Justin Blake, and Abdullah Shabazz, all out of Division 401, may I say, uh, served as security. <clears throat> Brother May L, Sergeant of Arms in Chicago, compiled Comply to a request to explain why the members of the Chicago branches of the Morris Science Temple of America fly the red, black, and green flag, to which he gave an excellent response. Uh, I didn't hear that response, but I, um, you know, I, you know, um, 
I honor <clears throat> uh, Brother Shaka and his, his sentiments. High Commissioner General Brother Marul Farrell said every member of the African race everywhere has a right to fly our flag, red, black, and green. Um, and I would agree. The HEC members included Honorable President General Michael Duncan, Honorable Raymond Duguay, First Assistant President General and High Chancellor, Brother Everett Winchester, Minister of Information, Clyde Banks, Minister of Industry and Labor, Honorable Charles Butler, Third Assistant President General and Minister of Education, Honorable Kwahir Asar Khan, Fourth Assistant President General, Sister Brenda Amor Khan, Secretary General, Brother Imhotep, uh, Council General, so um, the uh, brother Marula Farrell, High Council, High Commissioner General, also in attendance with Sister K, Director of the Universal African Motor Corps. There was a meeting, there was a mass meeting that evening around the theme of report from the diaspora. We had many guests who attended, including the representatives of the Nation of Islam, Wadu World African Diaspora Union, and the Pan African Organizations. I also served as the moderator of this event, engaging our guests as well as UNIA members in discussions primarily around youth, women, and relationships in the African diaspora. Every observation made by participants was added to enhance the discussion from closing the gap between elders and youth, the role of men in the protection of our women, and responding to white supremacy. An offering was raised and everyone was asked to participate. The speaker, Shaka Barak, read a creed he created for the US, Universal African Legions, Universal African Motor Corps. <clears throat> the next day on Friday, I was at the compound for the early bird session and prepared in uniform for close order drill for Universal African Legions. Nine of us, including the President General, Honorable Michael R. Duncan, participated in drilled and drilled uh, drills doing facing movements. Fourth Assistant President General Kwahir Asar Khan also made some suggestions for the facing movements and reminding us that this Dickey uniform is for drilling, exercising, and working. Uh, there were t-shirts sold to market the 2023 HEC conference. During this session, we heard from UNIA divisions from Curacao and from Kenya. We covered resolutions, amendments, and proposals, which we voted whether we should send them to convention. Resolutions that pass include uh, building a consensus, making attending convention and HECA priority, uh, establishing travel agencies, promotions within the UNIA auxiliaries, items of concern with early discussion in the age for having a proxy uh, be 65 and the disabled uh, can have a proxy vote. Um, I thought there was another resolution in regards to elections that has been missed out. <clears throat> um, again, I was running around. I don't have the details on what it was, but I know that there was something mentioned about um, elections that was supposed to go to convention and kind of opening up uh, elections to have it online or more accessible to uh, members that cannot or you know, that are not able to attend convention. Uh, da, da, da. The youth from Philadelphia, Brother Shashawn Townsend, suggested at one point that we should have a greater sense of urgency during our deliberations. It was reported that the Surgeon General had resigned. So Surgeon General Mike uh, James McIntosh uh, had resigned. The government of Liberia's First Lady wants the UNIA to help build a museum in the country. High Chancellor made it clear that there is a need to put more money into the African Redemption Fund. After the session, we had uh, an awards dinner hosted by Brother John Hargrove, who gave them to people who had completed a study of the book, African Philosophy. Um, the commissioner, for, all right, and um, before I go in there, the graduates, there were four graduates uh, this year. One was Brother... Bruce Staten out of Baltimore. The second was Sister Marvia Cujo out of New York. Third was uh, our, actually, actually the first uh, member out of Division 421, Brother Omasius. <clears throat> and the uh, highest scoring, the highest performer of this year's course was Secretary General Sister Brenda uh, out of Division 401 in Chicago. So we have four graduates this year. 
The commissioner for district number two was suspended from his commission without it being stated how long the suspension would last. The former UNIA council general, brother Imhotep, who attended with his wife, was reinstated to his office and took his seat at the HEC table. So uh, that's the good news that I wanted to mention. Uh, brother Imhotep has been reinstated as uh, the council general. So that's the highest legal office of the UNIA ACL. That's very important uh, if you understand the constitution and um, how basically the council general is the only one that can hold uh, the president general accountable. Uh, so uh, attorney Imhotep has been reinst reinstated in that position. We're very uh, proud of him uh, for the work that he's done. Uh, Sister K was appointed executive secretary for her division. A rule was established that anyone attending the main sessions late would be fined $15 and no one was fined and few were late again. Brother Abdullah and Brother Everett did a wonderful job in, lending, in leading the reciting of the motto and the slogan. The next day on Saturday, we began with early bird sessions of the Goddess Circle where sisters wore all white and the Universal African Legions where brothers gathered in all black clothing. Brother Abdullah Shabazz from Chicago did his hip hop poetry electrifying the members. There were quick reports of the Goddess Circle and the Universal African Legion activities. We finished up the last reports and the legal issue of how to distinguish between other UNIA factions and ourselves. It suggested our rebuilding the uniform auxiliaries would make a difference while some suggested writing official uh, writing official for our group would help. Uh, the president general suggested we recruit to improve the numbers in our divisions. We also talked about our international headquarters. The speaker in the HEC conference committed to $500 to the African Redemption Fund to support President Clyde Banks' goal of $1,000. <coughs> We also discussed the arrangements for a convention in August. The High Chancellor gave a comprehensive report on the UNIA's finances during the presentation by the third Assistant President General of the Issues and Concerns. President General Michael Duncan responded to every one of them to the satisfaction of the presenter and all in attendance. We voted on the next location of the HEC in Philadelphia won unanimously. Uh, we had a discussion on economic development and formed a committee to study the subject. In an effort to expand the Rock uh, Restaurant Owners Corp, the President General said that the Rock will match the amount a division puts into a grocery business up to $50,000. All UNI and ACL members can purchase stock at the original price of only $600. First Assistant President General Honorable Raymond Duguay spoke about two trips planned for Africa. The first trip to Africa will be in October and the next will be in February 2024, which I plan to attend. Uh, which uh, Brother Shaka plans to attend. Every day of the conference, he wore neat, this is a uh, first assistant president general, he wore neat looking garments that he had made in Africa. He also spoke on how to recruit and vet HEC members. A group of authorized photos and videos were taken from all those in attendance. There was a raffle of baskets containing a variety of val valuable memorabilia whose proceeds would go to the UNIA headquarters. After we closed the HEC ahead of schedule, many of us were happy to be able to get to our cars and in a caravan, uh, drive to the federal Atlanta Federal Penitentiary where the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey was in prison for two and a half years. We went up to the front steps with the red, black, and green flag to the main entrance and took pictures until we were told to leave. Then we did not leave, but the President General Michael Duncan gave us, led us to the front of another section of the property where, while defiantly standing there, I gave an overview of the Honorable Marcus Garvey's persecution. Frame up an imprisonment, and the President General recited the Honorable Marcus Mosar Garvey's message from Atlanta, published in the Philosophies and Opinions of Marcus Garvey. The first Assistant President General. Uh, Raymond Duguay drove President General Michael Duncan and I when we left and headed from the prison to the airport to catch our flights. Aluta Continua, Brother Shaka, Barack, One God, One Aim, One Destiny. Um, last thing, and then uh, we'll open up the floor. <clears throat> Let me go to, because uh, there is a video of President General speech. So I'll share that and then we will go. Is it live? 
videos, yeah. Let me do this right. Share screen, share sound. Okay. Um, so this is from President General Michael Duncan, um, April 25th. I mean, not April 20th, April 15th, uh, 2020. Oh. Marcus Garvey fully expected them to kill him in this prison. Um, he knew what he had done for his people, and he knew that the price for that was death. So he was expecting it, so he prepared himself. And he sent out that letter to every UNIA division across the world to relay those words to our wonderful members. And in that letter, Mr. Garvey said, after our enemies are satisfied, I shall come back to serve. He said, in life, I shall be the same, but in death, I shall be a terror, yes, sir. terror yes, sir. to the force of black liberty. If death has power, count on me to be the real Marcus Garvey. If I may come in a cyclone, pestilence, or as God would have me, black people, don't you know I shall never desert you and make your enemies triumph over you? Would I not go to hell a million times for you? Would I not cry at the footstool of the Lord omnipotent for you black people? Would I not walk the earth like the ghost of Macbeth for you? Then why be sad? Cheer up and be assured that if it takes a million years, the sins of our enemies shall visit the million generation of those who hinder and oppress us. If I die in Atlanta, my work then shall only begin for I shall live in the spiritual to see the days of Africa's glory. Look for me in the whirlwind. Look for me in the storm. Look for me all around you black people. And when I am dead, wrap me in the mantle of the red, the black yes, and the green. For with God's grace and blessings, I shall rise again. Yes, sir. I shall bring with me countless millions of Africans who have died in the Caribbean, North America, and Africa to aid them, aid us in the fight for freedom, liberty, and life. One God, one, one God, God, one aim, one aim, one destiny. One, one destiny. destiny. Long live Marcus Garvey. Long live Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. Brothers and sisters, Marcus Garvey only died when we stop talking about him. Marcus Garvey only died when we stop having actual meetings about the UNIA, actual meetings about Mr. Garvey, stop canonizing. He only die when we let him die. That's right. He only die when we stop being um, registers and paid up dues member of the UNIA. He only dies when that happened. So let's keep him alive. Let's keep the UNIA alive. Thank you, brothers and sisters. It's a blessed day. Walk good. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, brothers, at this time, Thanks, you will give us a little something. One God, one, one, God, God, one, God, one, aim, one aim, aim, one destiny. One, one destiny. destiny. At this time, you will return to your cars. We're not interested in a confrontation with these folks. <laughs> Let us go. Okay. Um, so that it will complete uh, our report for <clears throat> Executive Council. Uh, open the floor at this time. Any questions, comments, or concerns uh, before we move to member share? No questions. I hope everybody feels uh, as though, you know, we did a detailed report and though we could not attend, um, you don't, you didn't miss. Well, there's some things that you missed, but you didn't miss much. Um, and you got the details of what took place. So, last call, any questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Okay. All right. With that, um, Um, all right, well, we will go to, 
we'll close out that portion and uh, go straight into member share. Uh, brothers, you know, we have to be good listeners. So uh, we allow our sisters to go first. And, um, you know, I want to hear from our leadership uh, first. So um, without any further ado, uh, Mama Mina. Greetings, Mama Mina. How you doing? You had anything you want to share with the family? Lady President. Mama Mina, you there? Okay, all right. Uh, if Mama Mina comes back, we will come back. Um, let me jump over. Mama Mina, you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, anything I, didn't say that. I thought the executive council meeting went well. We did a lot of work, a lot of, uh, they took care of their business. So it was good. Let's even participate in that. I wish our membership would come out and be more active. Yes, uh, definitely a lot of work. Um, I agree. Uh, wish membership would come out. Um, but I mean, you know, um, I don't know what else to say to our membership at this point, and I'm not really even trying to um concern you know outside of any major major reasons why people couldn't uh support this um i i laid out my <clears throat> uh, significance of this meeting you know for a month going into high executive council uh, All right we haven't had a gathering of uh our that magnitude yeah this magnitude in over 10 years you know so um, if this is not something that uh, our current membership is willing to support, then um, I, as as president, have to start, you know, looking forward to you know, bringing in other people, you know, because obviously um, whatever the those members have, are seeing or have seen or the the intention that they've got, um, they have a certain position, and and I have no. You know, I got to respect that position, but we also have our position and we have a responsibility that we take on. So um, as I've told President Ross Marvin in the past, we can't let our people hold our uh, organization hostage. And by that, I mean, you know, we can't continue to spin our wheels trying to bring in um, the same people that keep walking away. <clears throat> you know, so um, it's time for us to focus on the next generation, um, give give others that haven't heard this message, uh, give them an opportunity to hear it uh, and to respond to it and, and to provide uh, their level of input and insight into um, the future direction of uh, the UNIA. So I agree with you, but, but that's my position. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm almost at the point where um, if, if individuals haven't come around and supported you know, at this point, after this type of event, uh, I kind of want to, you know, reset the the our membership um, list, you know, to, you know, and kind of just for those that haven't responded in, in over a year. Um, right. They, they, yeah, they're in the way at this point. You know, I don't know what they got going on, but they're not concerned with what we're doing. Um, so I, I got I got to focus on <clears throat> bringing in more people. We gotta bring in more people. You're right. I agree. So and women, especially, we need to get some more women active. Yes, um, need some help from the sisters. Uh, from from my standpoint, overall, uh, brother Macy has mentioned, you know, pr promotion and propaganda. That's where my mindset is. Um, I've been printing out our brochure, um, and I'm just getting ready for any events that we have uh, in the city. We should be there. We should have propaganda, uh, and we should be letting people know that we are part of Marcus Garvey's UNIA, and we are still actively doing the work. And we're looking for those, you know, that are willing to step up uh, to that responsibility. Right. We gotta promote. Right. Anything? 
Anything else, Mama Mina, before I go to our next sister? No, you can go on to the next person. Um, with that, thank you, uh, Lady President, and thank you for your support at uh, HEC. Made it um, a great event. You um, helped us out uh, tremendously. With that, I'll uh, bring in uh, Sister Ra Ebony. Greetings, Sister Ra Ebony. Greetings. Greetings. Um, just kind of piggyback off what I said before earlier. Um, it was a great experience. I really um, enjoy networking. And like I said, getting updates on the stats of the other divisions and seeing where they were in progress. Um, I'm just basically looking forward to um, the upcoming events, um, bringing in new members, just like uh, uh, President John mentioned, bringing in new members, um, getting out into the communities more. Um, like I think the community you know, more, you're right. Yeah, getting out into the communities more, um, actually being heard and uh, uh, being seen more. Um, even though I did step down <clears throat> from my leadership role, I, I did not stop working. So um, to come back, um, to, be, to be welcomed back, um, it's a great privilege and honor, and I'm very grateful. And I have a lot to, you know, bring to the table and time to uh, help progress with the 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 the, the agenda of uh, the UNIA, as I say. So it's a great it's a great privilege to uh, have been to um, in the seat to you know experience people experience the other divisions and um, uh, meet the president general. Um, thank you. Sister Amina, Mama Amina, for um, your, everything that you did. I try to keep up with you as much as I can. <laughs> you <laughs> moving, girl. <laughs> but I was definitely um, excited to be there and, and excited to give a helping hand as much as I, as much as I could. And, um, <laughs> yes, ma'am. And uh, thank you, President John and Sister Erica, for all that you have done. You guys really like made this thing move like you all like really made it move like even you know being in times of like okay you know putting our heads together I thank President John and Sister Erica for you know stepping up and, and actually taking the lead at, the, at those times so um, like I said um, so I'm landing my plane I'm, I'm looking for I'm looking forward to the upcoming events um and actually like, keep stepping up and, and keep seeing this organization thrive. I'm really proud of everything that happened and everything that I've seen and everybody that was involved. Thank you, Brother Omasius, for um, showing, I guess, a, a really great time. Like, I'm still hearing about it right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, give up a big ups for that. Uh, so, you know, like back at it, you know, we'll just keep going and keep striving and keep thriving. And I'm looking forward to the upcoming events of the year. Race first. Race first. Grace first. Thank you, Sister Ra Ebony. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, you have been uh, appointed as our second uh, lady vice president. So uh, congratulations, uh, Sister Ra Ebony, and uh, welcome welcome back to the executive body. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, but yes, um, one of the big takeaways, well, two things, and this is that's why I hate these type of positions being in quote unquote leadership, because you have to acknowledge everything and make sure you know, you, you don't miss anything, but uh, two, a couple of things that Sister Ryan said. First, I don't know if I said it, but I will repeat it if I did say it. Um, I want to thank everybody again um, that participated and supported uh, High Executive Council. Um, this was an extremely important event. Um, and if, you know, if, if, if you don't realize it, it was extremely important to me. Uh, and I appreciate everybody, you know, stepping up and doing their best to make sure um, we do a good job of representing our city. You know, um, oh, oh. The, these are uh, things that, you know, people will take back, you know, and experiences that they will take back and, and um, they will live with them for the rest of their life. <clears throat> so um, we only get one, we only had three days, you know, to, to make a lifelong experience. And I think you know, we did it. We did an excellent job. It was a lot of work, uh, very taxing, very stressful. It's not something mm -hmm. that um, I would want to do on a on a monthly basis. But uh, again, I'm very proud of us, and and it gives me confidence. You know, knowing that we can do this. You know, and if we needed to uh, put on another event in the future, we have the ability um, within our own um, within our own form. Right. Right. Uh, thank you for that. And also um, programs in the future. 
Oh, executive officers, like I said, this is why I'm slightly upset at us. Uh, I want to hit the ground running. Uh, I know we're tired. I know we're recovering, but uh, either we're being proactive or we're going to be reactive. Uh, and if we're not making plans, if we're not coming together, discussing the calendar, you know, what events are coming up, what events we well, need to support, uh, how we need to support mm -hmm. these events, how much propaganda we need to produce, what type of propaganda we need to produce, uh, shirts that we want to make uh, to make some funds, flags that we want to make. We need to, you know, know what's going on and be able to, um, you know, as an organization, you know, support and show out. Um, we need to, you know, love what we're doing and, and everybody's doing their thing, supporting as much as they can. Um, but I would like, you know, as, as Sister Rod Ebony said, and I don't know if she said it to us this extent, but uh, we need to show out from an organized perspective, you know, not just, hey, I'm a, <clears throat> a member of the UNIA, I'm a volunteer for the UNIA, but no, this is the leadership of the UNIA, you know, this is lady president and this is uh, second lady vice president this is first male vice president this is our community outreach uh, uh um organizer but we are an organization and we should be uh reflecting that when we go out into the community so we got to have a coordinated uh effort when it comes to uh supporting events and that's why our executive meetings are going to be so so important um, that's, you know, these meetings are not where we're going to go through all the details. You know, we can discuss what's coming up, but these are not the meetings where we go through uh, that level of detail and, and, and responsibility. So um, executive meetings, but uh, we, we, that is our focus. Um, April is almost done. I know May, uh, uh, Malcolm X Day, we, we, we need to have a plan for that. Um, exactly. African Liberation Day as well uh, is the week after Malcolm X Day. So um, I don't know if there's anything else going on this month or early in May, but now we got those two events towards the end of May. So um, but well, May 19th is the middle of the month for Malcolm X. Yeah. But uh, just just a heads up for the executive body. Um, we really got to start taking this serious and we really got to start coming together, uh, providing ideas. And brother Kenwardo, uh, I know he's on. He's been doing a great job of providing things that are going on. But on the same side, we have to support, you know, what each other is uh, presenting and, and promoting. You know, uh, it won't always be, you know, you present something and everybody supports your your idea. Sometimes somebody else will present something and we as an executive body need to make sure uh, we support that event as well. All right, that's all. Right. Thank you, Sister Ra Ebony. Um, we'll keep it moving. I think that's all of our sister officers. Oh, if I may mention real quick before we move on. Um, uh, I, I want to say that Malcolm, I went to Malcolm X Day last year and it was bomb. It was so many people out there. It was, it was so many people like in unison. Um, the vendors were um, very informative. They had a lot of uh, educational vendors out there as far as like a, uh, a lot of just African vendors out there. It was, it was a great, uh, perform like, great performance out there and everything like that. Um, if, when we get to that point of discussing it, yeah, it'd be a, I think it'd be a really great idea for us to set up a membership table out there and everything that we have to sell, you know, or, you know, vend at the time of, of that, or, or of that, of that, um, of that event, but we can get to that in time. I just wanted to say it is a great event and I think we should be a part of it some type of way. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, we, we got to go through the details on how we want to, uh, contribute, but we'll, we'll talk about that as, as an executive body. Um, all right, let me keep it moving to our other sisters. Uh, we got quite a bit of sisters today relative to our normal. Um, that's the blessing then. That's good. <laughs> um, let me bring in Sister Adaku. Greetings, Sister Adaku. Greetings, greetings family. Greetings, brother. Yeah, it's been a long time, so um, thank you for sending me the text. And um, other than that, I hope everybody's doing good, and I'm just here to catch up. Thank you, Sister Daku, for being here. We uh, always appreciate your support. You're a longtime supporter. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 
Uh, all right. I'm sorry. Raise first. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, we'll go to our sister out of Virginia, Sister Mary Hill. Greetings, Sister Mary. How you doing? Because he was missing and it was affecting his team. We love Junior Swear. I am. One second. Mama Mia. Yes, sir. Yep. I, yeah, I think your line's open. I can hear some background. And then, Mary, Sister Mary, uh, you were breaking up a little bit. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's a little better. Yeah, greetings. Excuse me. Uh, yes, I am doing well. My mother's, you know, doing well considering being 102. Um, and I wanted to ask, uh, I think I shared this with a couple of members. If anyone knows, uh, I don't know if he's a member or not, by the name of King, King uh, John the Poet. Uh, not in particular. Uh, it's not ringing a bell. I had to go through our database to see where is he from. Where's he out of? Where, like, what's well, his? it was a nine eight six area code, and uh, he was on one of the calls where I was sharing uh, some of the challenges my mother and I were experiencing, and uh, he had reached out via text and uh, and uh, offered you know, like his assistance. And uh, when I replied, I mean, I really haven't heard anything back from him. So I was wondering whether or not that was, you know, someone that just was a real, you know, on the call, uh, whether that was a fluke or, or what, I don't know. I, if anybody knew this guy or brother. Uh, 986 area code was coming back for Ohio, I mean, Idaho. Um, uh, wait a minute, it, no, it was like a Florida area code. Um, let's see here. Uh, it was, let me see if bring it back up. Hmm. Let's see. I'm sorry. John the poet. Check my. Oh. Yeah. Um, yes, did somebody put something up? What's that? No, I. I don't know. My phone went out and then it went back in preparing meeting. So I might have uh, lost you. No. Yeah, it was, uh, it was actually a few days and my phone is not allowing me to um, bring up my messages uh, while I'm on here for some reason. Yeah, but I think, I think it was a. Um, a Florida, let's see here. Mm. Oh. Uh, well, King John the poet, I'm not familiar. I You're breaking up again, Sister Mary. I'm sorry. I was trying to use my phone to go in my messages, but it seems like it 
it breaks up when I try to do that and stay on with you. But it, I'm not, no, I'm not familiar with that person um, personally. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard, I haven't heard from you number one that one. Uh, looked like Sister Mary fell off. She dropped off. Oh, she's back. Sister Mary, everything okay? Yeah, my phone keeps going in and out when I try to check my messages for this person. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm not going to respond. I just try to reach back out to this person. Again, I, maybe it was just you know, uh, not yeah, somebody I mean, it, that was had good intentions. Yeah, I don't. I would confirm what organization or that person. They said they got your number from the conference call. They want they 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 said that they were on the conference call when I was sharing my uh you know update with me and my mom challenges. Mm -hmm. We were on the call at that time. I think I had given out my number for, you know, and he had mentioned he would like to help help me, whoever he was. But then when I, I gave out my number, he did text me. And so, um, <clears throat> but I didn't give him any additional, you know, like information or whatever. Um, okay. Um, well, yeah, but I just wish people wouldn't do that. Yes, I understand. Um, There's also a reminder of, I didn't go over our ground rules, but um, that is one of the things that we try to um, enforce is, um, especially when it comes to our sisters not giving out any personal contact information. Or if you have business information, um, that's fine. Or email, right. that's fine. But we prefer that you not give out your uh, personal cell number or anything like that. Because um we right. do have different people that join the call uh and not everyone has the same intentions yes well that's i mean all the all with all being said you know all is all is well um we're um i'm right now i'm in uh the supreme court of virginia as well as the uh, Court of Appeals of Virginia, and with four cases on a uh, denial or dismiss from the trial court for a protective order. And right now I'm pro se. Um, so hoping that, um, you know, justice will prevail. Um, and basically just presenting you know what I know and what has happened and uh, just pray on the, so the court to give us a protective order um, because uh, you know the, this issue that really hasn't hasn't stopped even though they're off of our land they, they still you know do menacing actions and Intimidation, you know, uh, out in the community, you know, because, you know, we, we, we go other places just, you know, being in the confines of our house, you know, being a prisoner like that is just, you know, it's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, so that's where I am with that. Other than that, I hope all everyone continues to do well and race first. <clears throat> race first, thank you, sister. Race first. Um, um, we got a couple, well, at least one more sister on the call. And um, so let me jump over to Sister Diane. And uh, Sister Diane, I, correct me if I'm wrong, are you uh, one of our new members? Sister Diane. Diane Marshall. We'll come back to Sister Diane. Um, DRTZ, um, 
What's your name? Where are you calling from? DRTZ. Um, all right. We'll come back to those. Uh, let me jump over to our brothers and uh, we'll start out with um, DRTZ. Yes. DRTZ here. How you doing? What, what's your name? Where you calling from? I'm calling from New York, New York. Dr. Roots? Yeah, Dr. Roots. This is Dr. Roots. <laughs> greetings, brother. Greetings, 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 greetings. I, I, have, I have been away for about two years now. And, um, I've been in school. I, I was studying. I guess completed my coursework in cyber security, risk, governance, and compliance, doctor of philosophy. Hmm. Uh, I spoke with uh, Ras Marvin. Yes, sir. And I told him that I offer my service free of charge to develop a secured web portal for the UNIA. Okay. I, the reason is that my organization, the African Renaissance Festival, my, I'm saying our, I'm just a, a tool. We are having uh, uh, the festival in the United States this year. 2021, it was in Accra, Ghana. It's on our website, wonderful event. And so I wanted, I wanted him to place uh, the event on the, on the website, on the U.S. and the CBPM website. And he told me, no, the, the site, Yahoo has the, uh, canceled the software hosting the website. So I told him that I offered to my service free of charge to develop um, uh, attack-proofed web portal for the UNIA and trained a brother or a sister to take over the management. So that offers assistance. Um, I, uh, I'm here this evening to talk a little bit about the African Renaissance Festival, I think it is very important that hmm. you know what's happening on the motherland. I, I, uh, That's for I, sure. Okay, the African Renaissance Festival, it is an organization which we created a few years ago in 2019, actually to be precise. Uh, our mission is very simple. It's the mission of Honorable Gavi. There's nothing we, 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 when you think about it, UNIA, when you think about Ethiopian World Federation, African Renaissance Festival it is, it is in the border line. In the border line. We, have, we, we use several tools and, and uh, means to advance our agenda. Um, uh, we, 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 we use music, arts, and entertainment. You know, to uh, our goal is to see the total unification, decolonization of the minds of Africans, yes, home and abroad. I am, um, I'm 51 years old. I have lived in America for 21, 22 years now. Uh, since I've been here, I've never worked for the system. I've always created a job. I've, I've been in school, I've been on welfare system in and out. I've lived, slept on like other Africans when they come here. Once they get papers, the first thing they do, they get, they get a job. Then they get an apartment, get a nice car. Then the, the American life, I didn't take that route. Before I came here, I was well seasoned. A uh, Gavia, uh, an African revolutionary. I was one of those trained to participate in the greater war in South Africa. But when I left high school 81, I mean 1989, the war in South Africa was running down. So I took the ideological and the philosophical training for the, to, uh, to fight in the ANC guerrilla force. And the first material we are exposed to is Gavi's work, one of his earliest works, Africa Fundamentalism. Any black man, when you read African uh, Fundamentalism, you have a full knowledge of yourself as a black man. You realize that you give birth to the white man. You realize that you started technology, you built the pyramid, you introduced writing, geometry, trigonometry. When we were civilized, these people, they were eating their dead, but to they tell us that they are civil, they civilized. And when some of us accepted, they came to us, they brought white Jesus, and we see our Jesus, our God to white Jesus. So in Africa, when the brothers see white men, they're shaking their boots. 
here in America, I've lived here 23 years. You know, it's very pathetic what the way this guy programmed us. Here in America, they make us, we see, when we see, when we see, we, we hate each other. We, 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 we don't trust each other because of, we see our God through white Jesus. So anything black is bad. Anything black is evil, your brother, your brother, black men. We don't trust each other. That's our biggest obstacle to our success, to our success in this country. Because of our experience, we'll be exploited by our own black people. And from a country, Liberia, established by the American, um, the American, three American colonization society to settle black people. And when Honorable Gavi decided to go to Liberia, when La Liberia owed owe the American government $100,000, million, $100, almost, and uh, 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 one million to be precise. And NWACP, W. Du Bois, Honor cut him, went to, the, went, to the, went to the Liberian government, told the press, the government that, look, Gavid is coming to take your power, to, to become, he, he declares himself as the president of Africa. It's important for us to know history. We, um, any man without the knowledge of his past is like a tree without a root. Because we don't know our history, we may make the same mistake. It's important we know it. So when he went, they ran the propaganda against him. Consequently, the, the ignorant Liberian government went to introduce Harvey Firestone. And Firestone paid that bill for the Liberian government. And he screwed on Rogave out of that deal. He never stepped his foot on Liberia. But on the, on the flip side, the brothers who were the slaves who were freed here, when they, when they reintroduced slavery, I'm an indigenous of Liberia. So my, my grandfather, my grandfather were, were tortured. We, we paid taxes to a government that did not serve us. We were, not, we were unrepresented in our government. Until 1980, as indigenous in Liberia, we were not allowed to even vote in Liberia. A black man, since so living is fellow black man, in order to go to school, you have to speak English, live with them, speak English. The same thing, they just replicate that and then a slavery. So you found Liberians with all kinds of names. The president of General Sister is married to the president of Liberia. I'm sure he's been in Liberia so many times. He knows the Liberia. So in Liberia is the only country in Africa when Liberians travel overseas, they abandon our culture. In Georgia, many of my countrymen live in Georgia there. Go to their home, their children cannot speak the, the native language. You know, so. <clears throat> So it is because of this, my personal experience, I survived the war in my country. I, I'm a victim, I'm a survivor of massacre. July 29, 1990, the St. Peter's Lutheran Church massacre. My brother was murdered before me. I don't, I don't want to hold you back, but I just want to give my little background. It's important to know history. It's very critical. So we created African Renaissance Festival to liberate, decolonize the minds of Africa, to, to, to serve as, um, as a vehicle to, to, to stimulate the, the unification of Africa, one currency, one, one military command, one parliament, that's our goal. And in the, in the diaspora, where our aim is to help black people a repatriate to Africa. So we have all kinds of programs within African Religious Festival, but we use music and entertainment, arts, uh, as a platform to promote our ideas and philosophies. So this year, we we're picking back on Africa that has become now the big, the hottest commodity. Everybody wants a piece of Africa now. So we want to capitalize on that using, uh, uh, we're having a, uh, a conference, Africa, US, Africa, Caribbean Business Forum on, 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 on September 27 to the 29 in New York City. There's three things happening at the same time. One, an uh, um, uh, 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 opening and closing gala, Three days conference, business conference. Three second. The second component is the um the uh, music entertainment. Um, every night there will be a massive musical festival. Then tourism. Why 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 do we want to do with the money? We want to use the money raised from that to build the African Center for Innovation and Technology. As a computer scientist, what am I doing? With the knowledge. I believe that. When you have knowledge, if you can convert that knowledge into services and product to, to, to advance humanity, that knowledge is, is nothing. That's why I go to school, I don't work for the bank. I use the knowledge to create jobs. I have I built fast companies now in America here. So I want to build the African Center for Innovation Technology to develop drones and other um, uh, internet of things in Africa to convert Africa, young people, to be free school that will transfer technology, Knowledge for young people believe that through technology, information, communication technology, 
we can combat poverty in Africa like the Indians do. Indians control the, 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 the IT system, IT sector in this country, you know. So that's what we're trying to do with African Renaissance Festival. But all of the information is on the website. When I was active with the UNIA, I chaired the com committee for the decommunization, complete exoneration of Honorable Gavi. And, and, and uh, even though I'm not, I don't come to meet it because of my academic work, I'm still advocating for the, um, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, complete acceleration of Honorable Gavi through my platform. I, I, I've, I've started a ministry called the One African House of Spirituality. I'm an I'm a African traditionalist. I, Afri I practice African spirit uh, 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 spirituality. I practiced it. My parents practice it, and they pass it on to me. I practice it. I look into people's future. So I started a ministry here to help Black men and Black women to return back to their spiritual roots and uh, abandon this white Jesus nonsense. Because Jesus was not uh, 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 white, white, he was black. You know, we know God. These people do not know God. They deceive our people. They took away our spirituality. So I'm going to stop there. I don't want to waste your time. You know, so I'm I'm prepared. I'm open to um, still committed to building uh, um, the website on Web 3.0, uh, 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 Web 3.0 that we can integrate it with cryptocurrency and do a lot of things and do a lot of things on the platform. I really, 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 I'm a disciple of Honorable Gavi. And uh, I would like to see his, uh, what he's created for us succeed to become the second to non African liberation movement worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roots. Uh, and yes, I, I remember um, you were ahead of our uh, Garvey Exoneration Committee. Uh, for Division 421 and um, did a great job. You provided a lot of great content uh, and, and you let us know that um, you were going to the continent uh, for some time. So we, we, we'd love to see you back. I even married. I got three wives now. I got three wives in Africa. I, I can't bring them. I don't practice polygamy. That's why I'm totally against the LGBT nonsense. I'm advocating every day on my platform. You don't allow us to, to, to practice polygamy here. Why are you going to Africa telling us about LBGT, LGBTQ? This is pure racism. Mm. So the Democrats <laughs> talk about racism in this country, but they treat us like garbage in Africa, for example. Case in point, this man here, uh, uh, Gregory Meeks, he wrote a bill called Countering Restaurant My Land Act in, Af in, uh, Act in Africa. And in the bill, he's telling the government president Biden to sign a bill to punish African countries for doing business with either China or Russia. So, uh, so but I'm glad that South Africa, South Africa pushed back and Biden didn't sign that bill. In the Congress, these guys are extremely ignorant about Africa. That's why they can vote with, 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 with the Caucasians against Africa. Like the, the Zimbabwe, they don't behave like the Jews when it comes to the question of Israel. So we have work to do. We need to educate our people about Africa, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you said a lot. Um, I'm going to try to touch on a couple things that I pulled. Um, as far as rebuilding the website, um, first Sunday of next month, May, uh, will be a CBPM meeting. The CBPM meeting is where we want to uh, have that discussion. Um, that that The website is a CBPM product. Uh, I am still a part of the uh, CBPM engineering department. So um, we are in discussions about rebuilding the website, and we'll need, we'll need that input, but that'll be first Sunday of May. Okay. And the other thing that you said... Uh, African Renaissance Fest in September 27th through 29th this year. Yes. Where is it? Is that that's in New York? Yes. I mean, and, and as, as the information is on the website, W. No, yeah. the, it's a conference in New York. The yes, festival New York is some other time. City, yes, the entire festival is on the website. Yes. July. What's the website uh, where we can w, find? W, w, let me let me let me let me paste it. W W dot A R F 2023 dot o r g w w dot a r f twenty twenty three dot o r g okay yeah thank you and uh, we will share that with our uh, parent body in New York and make sure um, you know you and I is is, is supporting and in, in attendance <clears throat> or at least you know is aware if not supporting thank you thank you Dr Roots and uh, welcome back and you know I look forward to your Continue support, um, uh, you know, for Division 421 and UNIA. Thank you. Welcome. 
Uh, all right, now let me. I was trying. Uh, Sister Diane, did Sister Diane come back? Did she make it before I continue with the brothers? Um, Can you hear me? Yes. How you doing, Sister Diane? I'm doing well. How is everyone? Greetings, everyone. I'm doing well. Is this your mm -hmm. uh, first time on the call? You um, you were at. It is. I, at I I I heard my name at the tail end, but I was actually in the supermarket, kind of listening bits and pieces. Okay. And when you called, it was my turn at the checkout. So I apologize for that. No problem. Um, I, I saw your name and I recognize your name. I was just going through our um, new member uh, applications and I, I saw your name there. So um, I, I'm aware of um, who you are and, and uh, your attendance at High Executive Council. Is there anything that you wanted to share with the family as a uh, attendee of High Executive Council and as a uh, new um, uh, member of the division? Uh, just basically that I am um, excited about what I've, what I've seen so far and I kind of came away, came away with why haven't I known about this before, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think it's a, an amazing organization and I think that um, we can all come together and make some wonderful things happen. I'm actually working on something currently that can link um, Africans on the continent with Africans in the diaspora, but it's in the beginning stage and I have to do some fine tuning, but definitely that's, that's what we wanna do and just create a better situation overall. Yeah. And so I am impressed with this organization so far. I've not, uh, dive into all the materials I, I have received at the event because I came back and was kind of busy, busy, busy uh, the last week or so, but definitely intend to dive in and and become more active, become a more active member and make a positive contribution. Yes, ma'am. She's in Georgia? I am. Macon, Georgia, about an hour, about an hour and a half south of Atlanta, Georgia. Great. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Sister Diane. We definitely appreciate your support um, and we look forward to, you know, working with you and, and hearing your suggestions on um, things that we can do to, to, to help our people uh, in our uh, in our area. Um, just for context, you know, we are the official chartered uh, division of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. Um, we are uh, the division in Atlanta that is the legitimate division in Atlanta, uh, doing our best to continue the work of Marcus Garvey and um, the the legacy that Marcus Garvey himself uh, created and, and left for us. Uh, we're not, a, you know, Garvey group. We're not a Garvey organization, a Garvey-like um, uh, group. We are the actual organization that Marcus Garvey created and left behind. We follow his constitution um, that he created and left, and we follow uh, his course of African philosophy uh, that he authored and, and left for us. So, um, you know, we try to do our best to, to honor the legacy and to continue the work by building and maintaining the government uh, that Marcus Garvey created for us in 1920. So uh, thank you, Sister Diane. And again, look forward to uh, working with you. Likewise. Thank you. Uh, so that is our sisters. Thank you, brothers, for being extremely patient. Uh, first brother I want to go to, uh, first vice president, Brother Omasius. Greetings, Brother Omasius. Brother Omasius. Greetings. Greetings, greetings, family. Can, can, you, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you pretty good. Anything you want to uh, share with the family? Uh, you know, um, I'm just excited. Uh, ACC conventions, uh, I just look forward to them all, all, always since I've been going. It's almost like an addiction to me, you know, the gathering with, with, with people from everywhere. You know, I, 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 just, I can't miss one. I, I sort of miss one, you know, and I hope I'm hoping that, you know, with, with us being able to experience it right here in Atlanta, that everybody was able to grasp onto that field and you know, just understand how important it is to show up to these meetings and meet everybody uh, who's in the UNIA. Because, you know, we are a collective organization representing a collective goal of, of 
government, and we are an office of that of that government. So sure. seeing everybody that's involved, seeing the the the, the picture, the knowing that we we're not by ourselves at the Edge Investors Division. Um, you know, there are other people that you can tap into for different ideas, um, and people who are who have the same goal as yours in other parts of the country. Uh, you can you get the opportunity to hear those same struggles that they're going through. Uh, it was it was one question where they would just ask ask people, you know, what do you do about the youth? And mm-hmm. other 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 uh, the vision had an opportunity to share how how they reached the youth. So just these opportunities to be able to not only just uh, get those ideas from the people, but that connection that you get to to grasp with the people all around the world. Uh, you you make friends for life, and you know you you have people that, who are on the same mission as you. So my encouragement is that if you didn't come to this one. You know, try to get it filled up for next year. I know Curacao uh, for convention mm-hmm. may be a little bit far for everybody to get to, but I promise you, uh, if you make that trip, it'll, it'll be worth it and uh, possibly change your life um, and, and light a fuel of a fire within you that, that know to know that you know you're not out here doing it by yourself. So that's my you know biggest takeaway, and I hope that that would be the takeaway of everybody who had an opportunity to attend, just that fire to just attend more and show up. Um, for our government as a whole um, and, and continue to strengthen what we're doing here. Um, for me, uh, my, my biggest excitement, you know, as far as being a business development coordinator for division, it, it was, you know, some of the ideas that were thrown out, the, the commitment to start a credit union for, uh, for the UNIA, the travel agency. Uh, that's something that, you know, kind of, you know, things I've been working on, you know, in the background myself. So um, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I worked on a lot of stuff this week to be able to uh, present some business development goals uh, going forward for uh, next year and how we can be on that same page uh, as far as credit union and travel agency that, that everybody's going to be focused on. So um, my goal has always been a uh, collective focus for the entire UNIA so that we could be on the same page and present ourselves to the world. Uh, as that government, and like uh, Dr. Ruth said, uh, second to none when it comes to to African uh, liberation, and that, that's that's who we have to be and own ourselves that we are the UNIA, and th- there was nobody. Garvey is second to none, or or his vision, or his ideas, or on his constitution, or a message to the people. That's second to none, and I I've been a part of a lot of organizations, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I'm I'm really happy to be a part of this one and I'm, I'm happy to, to to know that um to see the constitution unfold to today to mm-hmm. see us uh walking into to act, the actualization and, and falling into place on how we can can make it a reality to to fit these times um to be able to govern the midst of our people uh and 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 that mentality rooted in self-reliance self-pride and and, and pride and love you know, I, I I just know that as we continue to, to that continues to unfold, that it will be the the remedy that our people need to to, to repair uh, all the traumas from from this society that we were uh, that we are in. Um, you know, of course, we we know a lot of us was here before. Some of us came over. I, wherever we store you want to come, there are some traumas that 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 are, that are attached to this society, and Garvey has a lot of tools to be able to overcome those traumas. And that's why I'm so proud to be a part of this organization. And uh, I hope that, you know, everybody else has that same excitement. And we like President John said, we can't take this momentum going forward and continue to actualize the visions that we've already had and uh, have those same visions for ourselves. So uh, race first, uh, one guy, one, one destiny. And I'm just looking forward to the work uh, that we're going to continue to, to do. <clears throat> race first. Uh, thank you, Brother Macius. Uh, for those that are not aware, Brother Macy's is also our uh, business coordinator, um, and he's also uh, working with our Minister of uh, Labor and Industries um, of, for the entire UNIA on, on um, business uh, ideas and, and make, as he said, making sure we're on the same page. Um, he said quite a bit, um, as I mentioned earlier, Brother Macy's is a uh, recent uh, graduate of the course of African philosophy, but um, he has... Uh, take you know he studied the course for over two years um and he's you know uh, a, a great example of uh you know what it means to carry out the work of of garvey in modern day something that came to my mind when you're talking about uh the constitution unfolding today um coming out of hec 
one of the things that I came to a realization of was there's a difference between the idea of the UNIA and the reality of the UNIA. Um, the idea of the UNIA is what we've learned about um, the history, um, you know, uh, philosophies and opinions, um, the pictures, uh, you know, the events of the past. <clears throat> um, these things are something that uh, motivate us and build a level of pride. Um, but we also have to be attached to the reality of the UNIA. And when uh, Brother Macias yeah. talks about uh, HEC and convention, there is no more pure um, um, essence of the Garvey movement than these two meetings. Um, you, 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 you know, there is no, you can't be any more Garveyite um, than, you know, attending these meetings, uh, participating in these meetings, um, um, you know, um, voting, you know, up or down to, to adjust our constitution, to try to improve our government, um, for me, that's what's uh, addicting, you know, when, when uh, Brother Macias talks about this being an addiction, but um, you are a active part of um, what Garvey created and what Garvey left, and it is still active and functioning today. It's not as, um, you know, like I said, the, the, the idea and the reality aren't in a line, but being an active dues paying member, uh, being able to contribute uh, and being able to have your voice heard uh, in the UNIA, in Marcus Garvey's government, um, <laughs> is there is no, is no comparison. Uh, so uh, that's, I think that's part of what um, Brother Omasius is, is trying to convey. Uh, he mentioned a couple of things in regards to upcoming meetings. So in August, we will have a convention in Curacao. Um, this is going to be a little bit pricey. Uh, I think they talked about round trip tickets were about $860. And um, they will be staying there for a week from a Monday to a Monday. Uh, hotel rooms, I don't know if it was $100 or $150 a night, um, but somewhere in that range. So this is about a two thousand, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar trip um, to get to Curacao per person. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to make it. I don't know how many numbers, you know, we can get to attend this uh, based on the resources that we have as a division. Um, that's that's very expensive, honestly, for for us as a division. Um, and and I've talked about this as well in the past. Sometimes the positions of us as individuals don't necessarily match us as, as, as a division. So some of us as individuals and me, myself, I could, as an individual, I could make sacrifices and make it happen. Um, but why can't we be in that same situation as an organization uh, to where the organization is as financially secure as, as our participants, as our members, as our people. Um, so we'll talk about that more, but um, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is, we need to do the best we can to attend Curacao, but I'm not too pressed on Curacao. I already know what's going to happen. Um, I've you know been around for a few years now. I want us personally as a division to focus on um, High Executive Council in Philadelphia next year. Uh, we've talked about this, you know, time in and time out about having a delegation. <clears throat> Um, Garvey says in the message to the people course of African philosophy, if you have somewhere that you want to be in December, you need to start planning in January, uh, basically a year. Um, I'm saying, you know, do the best we can as individuals for Curacao. We'll come together and see what, what we can do, but I want us collectively, uh, to start planning for Philadelphia ASAP. So, um, at our next executive meeting, um, brother Omasius, um, you have been in Philadelphia. You were there for some time. Um, I would like for you to to take leadership on trying to get, you know, see what we can do to get uh, a five, at least five people, you know, to to travel um, to Philadelphia, uh, having a, a vehicle that we could drive, and um, if Attorney Emotep or some elders uh, would like to go, and we need to put some funds together for them to fly. Uh, let's let's have that discussion. Um, but yes, uh, can't stress the importance. 
more than what Brother Macias said about us being able to attend High Executive Council uh, and convention on a consistent basis and have an active participation in today's uh, UNIA ACL and, and our uh, active living constitution. Brother Macias, were you going to say something? I was just going to let if anybody want to go with me to your side, if I have to get a boat, you know, a pallet over there, y'all can ride with me. I'm going up there. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, them numbers. You get that boat. But I'm on it for the uh, AGC. I got you, brother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Curacao, we'll talk about it at the executive meeting um, on how many people realistically uh, think we can go. Uh, I'm not expecting a lot, but I do expect us to do everything that we can to attend. Um, some of us that have been around for a few years, we like I said, we know how this thing goes. We know how this works. Um, we know the politics behind it. Um, so I'm not surprised that this convention is in, in this type of location. Uh, and just a heads up, convention 2024 is an election convention. Uh, so the previous convention dictates the location of the next convention. So in Curacao, the people that attend Curacao will, will determine the location for 2024 convention, which is an election convention. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> that was the politics behind it, huh? Shoot. There you go. You, I ain't, you know, you ain't got to be a rocket scientist, but it's politics and there, yeah, the, it, I don't like it. Uh, I don't I like it. I'm so sorry. I don't like it one bit, but again, the idea of Garveyism and the reality of Garveyism, this is the reality of the UNIA. Um, this is how our constitution works and functions. Um, if we want to change it, we have to work through this process of HEC and convention um, to change it uh, legally. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But, but yeah. You... I mean, do you have the, um, do you have the travel notes for this upcoming convention um, uh, on your persons or not? <laughs> uh, I have to get that out. Uh, I don't think it's been shared. I'm not sure if it's been shared yet. Um, there's been some discussions about it. Uh, some numbers have come out, but I don't think there's been any official documentation like we did for um, High Executive Council. Not yet. I expect that uh, early next month. Oh, gosh. Because they were still, I think at, at HEC, they were kind of updating um, what they had thought from previous because they were initially saying like, when when they picked Curacao that the round trip flight was three hundred dollars. Now they're saying the round trip flight is eight hundred sixty dollars, and they had a hotel. That's what I said as far as price, but it didn't have air conditioning. Um, but I don't think that has been documented and shared officially. But as soon as I get it, I will share it uh, via email. From y'all should be, especially executive officers should be checking your email. Uh, make sure you're getting the information that I'm sending out. But yeah, um, this is our this is our government. This is how it works. Um, we gotta we gotta play by the rules. <clears throat> um, uh, so that was brother Omasius. Brother Omasius, anything else before I go to the next brother? Okay, all right. No, uh, I did want to say though too, as a business government coordinator that by August, we should have enough to assist some delegation as far as the business development wise and concern in the division. So, so I think we have to set that as a goal to be able to send somebody. But, you, you know, um, one person, huh? you know, I'm, I'm trying to go. <laughs> no, but, but, but I just wanted us to, you know, just to make the importance about us. This We have time this year. I really should be serious and focus about, you know, and this to myself, uh, focus about us developing businesses and being in a better financial position. And uh, where we are today, hopefully it should not be the same uh, in August. Yes. Excellent point. You're absolutely right. Um, we always have to be uh, focused on bringing in profit. Um, and I, I like the challenge of, uh, you know, raising funds to at least send one person. Um, 
just a heads up and we'll, you know, we'll talk about this more at the executive meeting. We are doing okay financially. Um, you know, we're doing okay. I'm happy with where we are. Our treasurer is happy with where we are. Um, but we do need to, as an executive body, discuss uh, investing, you know, some some funds. Uh, so now that we have a little bit of resources left over after HEC, um, my idea is to invest that uh, in something that we can produce and then sell on the back end, uh, whether it's books, flags, more T-shirts. We actually did really well with the T-shirts, um, but just something that, you know, and, and we'll talk about this more and we'll, you know, I'll, I'll leave that to Brother Omasius uh, to lead, but these are just my, <clears throat> my suggestions. So I agree. Um, with that, let me go to our next brother. Uh, brother been on since the beginning. Um, brother Art, you and I remember 449, I believe. Brother Art, greetings, Brother Art. Brother Art, you there? Mm. Okay. Brother Art, we're going to come back to you. All right, uh, we'll go to our other brother that's been on since uh, the call opened up. Um, got you, Sister Mary. Uh, I'll I'll look. I'll see about that. Um, uh, Doctor Shams, greetings, Doctor Shams. Greetings, race first. Race first. How you doing, Doctor Shams? I'm very well. I hope everyone else is well too. You know, we're going through a time right now where they're trying to use their laws to favor favor their European kind and downgrade our uh, black or Moorish existence, how you want to call it. They put a ban on my Facebook account Ooh. because I kept putting up my website in there. You know, my website, which has educational material in it. But let me tell you what they have on Facebook. This is going to be outrageous. Bear with me. You know, hey, keep keep a focus mind on what I'm saying because Facebook is totally off the hook. They, they seem not to want nothing educational there, you know, just the muck and grime of naked women offering themselves to men. Anything derogatory or racist, because that's the other thing they got on there, the racism of uh, Fox News. And mm -hmm. Brother Omar Mutar helped me to realize that one, you know? Mm -hmm. But, uh, hey, that's that's why I set up that chat area, too. We can ha begin to start having our own social media outlets, you know, that we could uh, uh, spread abroad or broadcast anywhere we would like. You know, but it's going to be on an educational level, not what Facebook is looking for. They're looking for racism and sexism and you know, all kinds of other garbage. They want nothing educational on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I, I, think, I think that's part of the ban on the critical race theory that they're trying to project or put upon us, too, so that we forget our history and if we forget our history, it's common knowledge that if we forget our history, we will repeat our own history that, that they put us through. And none of us want, want that to happen. We have to stand up. We have to fight back. And we got to let them know that whatever laws they put in now, because they let Donald Trump right now say he, he they had nothing against him and allowing him to choose his vice president already. They they make a plans in case he goes to jail, he could be president behind the wall, you know, and, and have a vice president along with him, maybe on the outside while he paid for his crimes. But that that's to negate the fact that they are using their laws against us racistly and their laws, they don't want it to apply to them. They want their laws only apply to us. And that that is total inequality. And it is no good. It's not good for, for what we represent. Um, my, my website needs to go back up there. But I, I think that's going to be a long and tedious fight. 
because they acted so ignorant. They don't think they would speak up or rally or march or protest or anything that, that, that they're really trying to do. But all those things are things that we need to do to get our voices heard and to let them know, hey, this is not slavery time again. This generation here, this generation here is not going for entrapment and slavery, racism, brutality, or anything else that they want to throw at us. This, this generation here is willing to stand up just like a few generations before us. That we want to fight for what we have politically, verbally, otherwise as well. No justice, no peace. I just want to leave um, the message of what my website actually is. And I thank those for going to my website who have already went to my website, but I have not received any donations yet because I have a lot of other things there that like block me from receiving donations. You know, and uh, it belongs to other people, really. But I do, I do, I do favors like the Buy Black Movement. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that's one favor that I do, and a few other websites that I got from being on the conference calls and what have you. But it's nothing vulgar like what Facebook is actually looking for. Nothing vulgar, nothing racist, just educational, and they don't want to accept that. My website on the internet is located at not helpful USA legislations pro people dot brain sites plural dot com. That's not helpful USA legislations people dot brain sites dot com. And my phone number, in case you want to contact me for any reason, is one nine one seven five hundred. 1699. That's 1917 500 1699. Oh, and these wars around the world? Well, we know who's starting them, and they're going against a, a, a counter opponent as well that they tried to drop their bombs on already, which is called BRICS. I think that uh, Britain, Russia, India, China, and uh, Asia. Bricks or, or Syria, I mean, yeah, Syria is the last letter, not not Asia. But if you look up B R I C S, it'll tell you a lot about what the counter force is tr is trying to uh, combat, as far as what they're presenting to black and other minorities, Moors, or what have you. It don't matter who you are; you be Israelite, be what you want to be. They don't care. They they feel that. Hey, they, they got it now. They have what they have, what, what they need to walk all over us. And we're not going to do anything. We're going to sit back or we're going to rally and forget it. We got to do a lot more than that. That's why I put my chat service in my website. Not helpful. USA Legislations People. Dot .com. It's in the chat for those who are on the Zoom line with me now. Peace of race first. Race first. Thank you, Dr. Shams. Um, yeah, uh, BRICS, but well, just a correction, BRICS uh, acronym is uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South America. Um, but yeah, we, we got to be aware of that. We will have a report on that uh, in the coming weeks. Thank you, Dr. Shams. Um, next, uh, I think we only got a couple. Yeah, we got a couple brothers. Uh, next brother will bring in you and I member well uh you and I member out of well Dr. Br brother Art are, did you come back? Yeah, I'm here. Greetings, brother Art. You and I member for Greetings, family. I just want to uh congratulate uh Sister Rodney and Brother Emotep on their uh on their service and their promotions. Race first. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Brother Art. Race first. We appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, and I think we only got one other brother, uh, Brother Andrew. Greetings, Brother Andrew. Brother Andrew, you there? Okay. Uh, we'll come back to Brother Andrew. Well, I think he may be the last one. Was there anyone else that did not get a chance to share?
Everybody got a chance to share. Brother Andrew, last call. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, please, you know, uh, make sure you pay your dues uh, for those listening on on social media. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, consider making a contribution to UNIA Division 421 Cash App or PayPal. Um, and that's all I got. Um, so we'll close out with the motto of the UNIA. If you would, please repeat after me. Put your black fist in the air. One God. One God. One aim. One aim. One, aim. One destiny. One destiny. destiny. Africa. 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 For the Africans. For the Africans. For the Africans. Those at home. Those at those home. home. And those abroad. And those abroad. Race first, first, family. Race uh, first. Get some rest. Race first. Uh, Thank have you. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.